You know, just the other day, when I came to work, there was a little fella that was in his wheelchair sitting right there. And so I was, hi, how are you doing? What's going on? I'm talking to him. And uh, he said, when are we going to have chapel again? I really just want to have chapel. And I said, we will. So as you see, this is the safe chapel. We're all out here. We're not near each other. And um, we can just have a little chapel right here, right now. So I'm glad y'all are here coming and you're all safe. So that's good. I'm not safe, but I can't talk if I have a mask on. So I'm going to go ahead and um, pray. So let's bow our heads. Jesus, ah, thank you that throughout everything that has turned the world upside down, you are still there. You're still on your throne. You're still in control. And we trust you. We choose to trust you today. So Lord Jesus, would you come bring Holy Spirit and come wash over us right now? We just really, our hearts are yours. We want you. We really just want you. And so come right now. Fill our hearts with your love and your presence and your assurance in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Um, I have a couple of words. So is there someone here, your left foot, there's something wrong with your left foot. Anybody? Everybody good? Okay, I feel like there's an infection. So for that person, whoever that, that person is that has an infection in their left foot, we just want to lay hands on it right now in the spirit and say, in Jesus' name, you walked on the earth, you healed every disease and every sickness, and you never said no to anyone. And so right now, would you send Holy Spirit to brood over this left foot infection? Would you just send Holy Spirit to come brood? Just like he brooded over the waters and out came an entire universe, that you come brood over this one foot and that you bring healing to it. Because if the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives on the inside of that body, that you would quicken his mortal body unto life in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, is there someone here that has been struggling with regret? You regret something that happened, something that went wrong, something that maybe you did in your youth that wasn't your best choices. Um, the Lord says that today that regret is going to be on the ocean floor. That regret is going to be over. No more to be brought up again. Because when we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive our sins. And that in Jesus' name, it's on the ocean floor forevermore. Um, how many of you would say that through this whole kind of crazy upside down world we've been in, um, you may have had a little fear factor. Anybody that struggled with fear? It can come on you and kind of can sometimes act like anxiety and just a, a sense of anxiety and stress. And so I want to tell you a story. This happened at the mission, at the old mission, but one day uh, I was called to the lobby and there was a, there was, when I walked into the lobby, there was someone I needed to help. Uh, the lobby smelled horrible. It was a stench. It was foul, it was sour, it was awful. And um, so I thought, oh, this is not good. And uh, so they said, this gentleman has come because he's desperate. He's been uh, demonically oppressed and he says his sister put a curse on him. And so he wants you to, to cast out that demon. So I sat down next to him and honestly, it was hard because the stench was so bad and he was dark looking. His face was dark. His eyes were like pebbles. They were so, he was just dead. And um, so I said, what happened? What's wrong? He said, my sister put a curse on me. I said, well, what? Let me, he, I said, let me ask you this. Are you, got, are you involved in witchcraft? Have you been dabbling with witchcraft? He said, well, you know, a little. I said, okay, you can't do that. You cannot do that at all because you open the door to the demonic. Your sister put a curse on you. And he said, I'm so oppressed. I'm so fearful. I'm so afraid. You've got to do something. I can't live like this any longer. I have, you've got to do something. And so sure enough, I said, okay, let's cast him out. First, you have to re repent and ask God to forgive you for dabbling in witchcraft um, because it'll bring oppression into your life. And so he did, he repented, and then we started praying for him and casting out the demon. 
And all of a sudden he looked up at me and he was bright and cheery and he was grinned and he said, oh my gosh, they're gone, they're gone, the demons are gone. And so um, he got set free that day. And it sounds crazy. It's crazy that the demonic could actually do that to us if we let them in. So, and then uh, what was wonderful was that smell, that stench went away when we cast out those demons. And so it was a big day. And, and uh, he admitted, you know, he'd been involved in a little voodoo and that type of thing. And, um, but he repented and it was over. And, and so that's a good story to remember when things go bad. Remember this, the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and he'll take any opening he can get. But Jesus said, I have come that you have life and you would have it abundantly. And that's exactly what happened here. The devil tried to steal this little one, but Jesus came to give him life and give it to him abundantly. And so he, he said, my whole family's involved with witchcraft. I said, I'm, I don't recommend it. I'm telling you, it's bad mocha. It's bad news for you. Listen, it says in Luke 12, 32, Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. And he said, fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. What is the kingdom? What is it and what's different about that kingdom than this kingdom? Listen, this is the kingdom of heaven. How many of you have watched Star Trek before? And there's, you know, the Klingons and there's the space and there's parallel universes and it's all kind of crazy and they try to kill each other. It's wild. Well, it's kind of like that. There are parallel universes where we on the earth, we're in the physical right now, we're sitting in the cool sunshine, which is this great day, um, and that's one universe. But there's another universe that's invisible that we can't see that Jesus talked about. It's the kingdom of heaven. It's how things happen in heaven. And so in addition to that, there's another universe, parallel, parallel universe, in which the demonic acts. So here's the demonic that tries to oppress, kill, steal, and destroy. Here's the kingdom of heaven that Jesus brought to the earth. He said, fear not, little flock. How, do you know how many times he said, fear not, little flock, in the Bible? 331 times. Now, I didn't have to count them because my concordance told me that it was, it was, it said, fear not, little flock, 331 times. It's like, okay, guys, get this. I know this is hard to do, but please, Get this, I put this in here so many times for you. And so we have to remember this. It says that the devil goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That's his whole goal, is to devour us. How many of you have ever been betrayed? Amen. How many of you have ever been the betrayer? Don't look so holy. It's true. <laughs> Me too. And so what happens when that goes on is that somehow the devil comes in and uses even the likes of us to betray and to ruin and destroy somebody. And when we were betrayed, it, it, was, it hurt. It was desperate. It was awful for us. And I'm going to tell you a story about a woman. She came to the mission one day and she was beautifully dressed, but she was grotesquely bloated, I mean just big belly, and she was losing her hair, and um, she was completely oppressed, and uh, she, her husband was losing the business, everything that could go wrong in their life was going wrong, and she said, I just need help, I don't know what to do, I just need help, and so as we began to pray for her, we realized that she was riddled with bitterness, and resentment and anger because what had been done to her, what had betrayed her husband to lose his business. Has that ever happened to you? You might get a little resentful and angry at your perp and, and upset, and so you become bitter and angry and unforgiving. The problem with that is that, again, it opens the door to the demonic. Um, there's a book called The Bait of Satan. So Christians usually do really good. They don't smoke, they don't chew, they don't go with the girls that do. You know, they're really doing good. But Christians get hung up on being offended, bitter, angry, and unforgiving. So go, I can't forgive them. I can't forgive them. Well, you just opened yourself up to demonic oppression because you can't. We're not allowed. We're not. Why? Because let's face it, Jesus died not only for my sins, 
He died for my perp sins, my abuser's sins. So if it's going to be the same, and it has to be the same, it's, it, I'm either forgiven and set free, and so is my perp, or none of it's true. And you have to decide. So you think, okay, well, it's not worth it to be, walk around being oppressed because I'm mad at my perp. I'm mad at my abuser. I'm mad at what that my betrayer who did that to me. And so we're forgiven, but so is our betrayer. And that's something that's hard to swallow. But the minute you can get that revelation, you will be set free. So we explain this to this woman that this is how she was going to get set free. She was going to have to forgive her son and forgive the things that the betrayals that she had gone through. And so then when we did that and we were able to, she was to forgive and, and let go of the, um, just the anger about it. Then we started praying for her healing. It was really weird because we were casting out those demons, that spirit of anger, the spirit of resentment and the spirit of unforgiveness. And she began to, to burp. And, and more and more and more, which sometimes demons do that, they're, they're, they, sometimes it's embarrassing, but it's good. It's just, don't, just go for it. And at any rate, um, when I had my hand on her belly, and as this was happening, and we were casting out demons, her belly just went boop, and it was gone. In a second, her, her belly just disappeared like that. And she went, oh my gosh. And I said, see, it was just a demon. And now all that discomfort and all the pain that you've suffered is gone because you let go of your anger. And that's what we have to do. We really have to do. Is it hard? Heck yeah, it's hard. It really is. And yet she got totally set free. She'd been losing her hair. She was a mess. And she has come back to the mission since then, just happy, rejoicing because she got set free. And we do too. I'll tell you another story. There was a young girl. Uh, she came up after chapel. And she looked to be maybe 13. Um, she told me she was 16. She was skinny. She was beat up. She, you know how people chew their lips and they look like erasers, chewed up eraser heads? That's what she looked like. And that stench was there. It's the same stench as the other guy had, that oppressive, sour, ugh, ugh, vile smell. And um, she said, do you recognize me? And I said, no, honey, I don't. She said, I was the girl that was abducted from my home when I was 14 and um, I was sold into sex trafficking and sex slavery. She said, I escaped and I made it back home, but I'm not the same person anymore. They had to put me in the pavilion. She said, I'm on every drug known to man, including Ativan, just so I can function. And she just shook like this, just shaking, shaking. And um, I don't recommend Ativan. I'm just saying it's uh, demonic, but at any rate, she said, uh, I'm fine, I'm doing good, I'm really doing good. And I said, well, what would you like prayer for? What would y'all like, what would you like for me to pray for you? She said, I would just like to have peace in my heart again without all the drugs, especially the Ativan. And I said, you know what, Holy Spirit loves you. Let's just pray right now. So I laid my hand on her back and I started praying for her, for that peace. Jesus said, my peace I leave you. The peace that the world does not understand, I give to you. It's because it's supernatural peace. Supernatural peace that bubbles up. And so as I began to pray, and I could feel Holy Spirit come, and He started hovering over her. I could feel Him just brooding over her, just like a hen broods over her chicks. It was so sweet. And all of a sudden, she bent double, and she started sobbing and sobbing and sobbing and sobbing. And I knew Holy Spirit was cutting away and lancing that terrible pain that she had in her heart. And so after a long time, I just let her sob. I just stayed there with her. Holy Spirit kept moving over her. And then finally she stood up and her little face was bright and she smiled. And it looked like the clouds had parted and the sun had come out because she goes, I feel so much better. And that's because it's not because what I do it's because Holy Spirit comes he's the one that's supernatural peace Holy Spirit peace is way different than us just whistling past the cemetery isn't that correct well what I've learned is in my life if I change my focus from what was done to me to the things that I'm grateful for in my life all of us have things a we're breathing that's that's something to be grateful for B we're healthy that's something to be grateful for 
see, we're saved. We know the love of Jesus in our heart. That's something to be grateful for. Last week, I actually was at the grocery store. It's amazing how many times you have to go to the grocery store during the coronavirus, but I was at the grocery store and there was um, a little girl, she was probably, she was young, and she had a mask on and she was stocking the shelves. And so I just said, hi, and she said, what? And I said, well, I just wanted to say, hi, how are you doing? And she said, oh, she said, um, I can't hear, I have hearing aids. I lost my hearing when I was three. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I said, do you mind if I pray for you? Well, first she said this. I said, she said, I have hearing aids in. And she said, you know, hearing aids are good because you can hear. But she said, sometimes I just don't want to, I don't want to put up with people. She said a bad word that I can't say. And so I pretend I can't hear. I said, okay, so can I pray for you? She said, yes. So she was all tatted out and she was pierced everywhere. And, and um, so I just began to pray healing over her. And I said, amen. And she said, you know, being deaf is not as bad as some things. She said, you know what's really bad? And I said, what, honey? And she said, regret, my regret of my life, the things I've done. And I can't get away from that. And so I said, can I pray for you again? And so I started praying for, for that peace, but also that the regret, whatever it is, doesn't matter what that sin was, it doesn't matter how bad it was, it's on the ocean floor and it's done forever, never to be spoken of again. If somebody speaks of it, it's not the Lord, it's the devil who just wants to beat you up again and beat you up again and beat you up again and not let it go until you just, you know, how many of you have something you regret? And it's hard to f let it go. I mean, I do. I have regret of things that's very hard. Why? Because it was earth shattering and it ruined a life. And that's on me. But the Lord said, no, I forgave you. I never will bring it up again. So if it's coming up again, that's the devil. And you can tell the devil, no, sir, not today. We'll tell the devil, no, not today. And so I just, I mentioned to her, she goes, how do you do that? I said, you change your focus. And so she said, okay, what? I said, I encourage you to start list, making a list of things you're grateful for. Focus on what you have in your life and that you're grateful for. And she went, oh my gosh, that's a great idea. And I'm telling you, her face lit up. She was happy again. When I was leaving the store, she was waving at me. And so she just got set free. Why? Because the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life abundantly no matter what happened and who did it. That's the way it is. So I want to leave you with those words today and, and I hope that will help you. I'm going to pray for you real quick. So Lord, I just lift up every one of us that have regretted something we did, that we fell into oppression, we fell into depression, we fell into thinking it was hopeless and it was never going to ever change. So now we just stop and we turn our lives back over to you and we say, in Jesus' name, I'm not picking it up again. I'll change my focus. But Jesus, you got to remind me. You have to whisper in my ear and remind me when that comes back on me because I don't want it anymore. And so, Lord, help me to remember and remind me when the devil tries to come back and bring up things that are on the ocean floor. Do that for me. In Jesus' name, amen.